Hello, everyone. Now we will learn the basic knowledge of the boiler equipment in power plants. The key points in this section are as follows. First, the function and composition of boilers. Second, the main characteristics of boilers. Third, the classification and models of boilers. Fourth, boiler fuels and layer properties. Fifth, boiler heat balance and virus heat losses. Boiler equipment is one of the main pieces of equipment in thermal power plants. Saving as a large and complex heat exchanging device, that produce steam, its function is to combust a certain amount of fuel and transfer the heat released from combustion to water, heating the water to vaporization and superheating it to a certain pressure and temperature. Boilers are generally composed of the boiler body, auxiliary equipment, and the boiler accessories. The boiler body is the main component of the boiler. It consists of the furnace, flue ducts, economizer, steam drum, down common tubes, water cooled walls, superheater, reheater, burnace, and air preheater, among others. Among these, the economizer, water cooled walls, superheater, reheater, and air preheater are referred to as the boiler's heat transfer surfaces, the economizer, steam drum, downcomer tubes, water-cooled walls, superheater, and reheater, etc. form the part of the boiler, while the furnace, fluid ducts, burners, and air preheater, etc. form the stove of the boiler. Additionally, the boiler body also includes the furnace wall and the structure among others. Power station boilers have a considerable number of auxiliary equipment, which mainly include ventilation equipment, fuel transportation equipment, powerizing equipment, feed water equipment, dust and ash removal equipment, flue gas, Desulfurization and denitrification equipment, water treatment equipment, measurement and control equipment, etc. Boiler accessories are the ancillary equipment on the boiler body and the auxiliary equipment used to ensure the safe and economical operation of the boiler unit. This mainly include safety valves water level gauges, suit blowers, thermal instrumentation, automatic control devices, and valves on the steam and water pipes, among others. The main characteristics of a boiler refer to the boiler capacity, steam parameters of the boiler, and feed water temperature, which are used to describe the basic operating conditions of the boiler. Boiler capacity also known as the boiler's evaporation rate, refers to the amount of steam produced by the boiler per hour. Boiler steam parameters generally refer to the superheated steam pressure, gauge pressure, and superheated steam temperature at the outlet of the boiler superheater. When the boiler is equipped with an intermediate reheater, the steam parameters should also include the preheated steam pressure and the reheated steam temperature. The boiler feed water temperature generally refers to the feed water temperature at the inlet of the economizer based on the boiler capacity. Boilers can be classified into three categories, large, medium, and small. According to the steam pressure at the boiler outlet, boilers can be categorized as lower pressure boilers, medium pressure boilers, higher pressure boilers, ultra high pressure boilers, subcritical pressure boilers, and supercritical pressure boilers, etc. 
According to the combustion methods, boilers can be classified as red fired boilers, chamber fired boilers, cyclo boilers, and circulating fluidized bed boilers, etc. Based on the flow method of the working medium within the evaporative heating surface, boilers can be categorized as natural circulation boilers, controlled circulation boilers, and once through boilers, etc. Boilers models are generally used to indicate the boiler capacity, steam parameters, and fuel characteristics, etc., which can reflect the basic features of the boiler. In China, power plant boiler models are generally represented by three or four groups of characters. Topically, boilers above or too high pressure are equipped with intermediate reheaters, and the boiler models generally use four groups or characters to represent. The first group of characters represents the boiler manufacturer's code indicated by the abbreviation of the manufacturer's name in pinyin. For example, DG Dongfang Boiler Company, SG Shanghai Boiler Company, HG Harbin Boiler Company, WG Wuhan Boiler Company. The second set of code is a fraction. The numerator represents the capacity of the boiler in tons per hour. The denominator represents the steam pressure at the boiler superheater outlet in megapascals. The third set of code is also a fraction. The numerator represents the superheated steam temperature in degrees Celsius. The denominator represents the reheated steam temperature in degrees Celsius. In the fourth set of code, the symbol represents the fuel code. For example, M represents coal, Y represents oil, Q represents gas, T represents other fuels. The number represents the design sequence. Medium and high pressure boiler models often use three sets of characters to represent them. This involves removing the third set of characters from the aforementioned mode. Fuel refers to substances that can produce heat through combustion. Currently, most power station boilers burn organic fuels are substances that can undergo a strong chemical reaction with oxygen and release a large amount of heat. Organic fuels can be categorized by their physical state into solid fuels, liquid fuels, and gaseous fuels. At present, Coal fire boilers predominate in China's thermal power plants. So, this section primarily introduces the calorific value of coal and the feasibility of ash. The calorific value of coal is one of the important characteristics of coal. It refers to the heat released when a unit mass of coal is completed burned. To ensure comparability in economic operation of equipment between different plants, the concept of standard coal has been introduced. Standard coal refers to coal with a received base low calorific value of 29,000 310 kilojoules per kilogram, 7,000 kilocalories per kilogram. The standard cooler consumption rate refers to the amount of standard cooler consumed by a power plant or unit 
to produce one kilowatt per hour. For example, one unit of electricity. The feasibility of ash has a significant impact on the economic and safety aspects of the boiler operation. In the operation of boilers, the three common characteristics of ash feasibility are deformation temperature, DT, softening temperature, ST, flow temperature, FT. In boiler technology, the softening temperature ST is often used as an indicator of feasibility or ash melting point for 1 kg or 1 cubic meter, the minimum amount of air required for complete combustion of the received base fuel with no residual oxygen present is called the theoretical air value. To ensure that the fuel in the furnace can be as completely burnt as possible, reducing the heat loss from incomplete combustion, the actual amount of air fed into the furnace should be slightly larger than the theoretical air value. This air value is referred to as the actual air value. The ratio of the actual air value to the theoretical air value is called the excess air coefficient. The excess air coefficient is an important indicator for boiler operation. From the perspective of energy balance under steady operating conditions, the heat input into the boiler should be balanced with the heat output from the boiler. This relationship of income and expenditure of heat in the boiler is referred to as the boiler heat balance. The heat input into the boiler refers to the heat that enters the boiler along with the fuel. The heat output from the boiler can be divided into two parts. One part is the effective heat utilization of the boiler, and the other part is the virus heat losses of the boiler. The effective heat utilization of the boiler refers to the heat absorbed by the water and steam as they pass through the virus heat transfer surfaces. The virus heat losses of the boiler are as follows. Solid incomplete combustion heat loss is due to the presence of unburned residual carbon in the ash resulting in heat loss. Gas incomplete combustion heat loss refers to it caused by the presence of unburned carbon monoxide, hydrogen, methane, and other combustible gases in the flue gas. Exhaust gas heat loss refers to the heat loss caused by the temperature of the flue gas leaving the boiler being higher than the ambient air temperature, resulting in a portion of the boiler's heat being carried away by the exhaust gas. Heat loss due to radiation refers to the heat loss caused by the temperatures of the steam drum, header, steam, and water pipes, furnace wall, etc. being higher than the ambient air temperature, resulting a portion of the heat dissipating into the air. Physical heat, loss of ash and slag refers to the heat loss caused by the higher temperature slag being discharged outside of the furnace. Boiler thermal efficiency can be determined through two methods. One method is to measure the heat input into the boiler and the effective heat utilization of the boiler, and then calculate the boiler's thermal efficiency, which is referred to as the direct balance thermal efficiency. The calculation formula is as follows. Eta equals Q1 equals Q1 divided by Q1 multiplied by 
The other method is to measure the virus heat losses of the boilers and then calculate the boiler's thermal efficiency, which is referred to as the indirect balance thermal efficiency. The calculation formula is as follows. Eta equals Q1 equals 100% minus the sum of Q2, Q3, Q4, Q5, and Q6. The actual fuel consumption refers to the amount of fuel that the boiler actually consumes per hour, often simply referred to as the fuel consumption. Calculating the fuel consumption takes into account the existence of solid, incomplete combustion heat loss, which is the amount of fuel that actually participates in the combustion reaction inside the furnace. These two types of fuel consumption serve different purposes when conducting calculations for the fuel delivery system and the pulverizing system. The fuel consumption is used for the calculations. However, when calculating the amount of air required and the value of flue gas, etc., it is necessary to use the calculated fuel consumption for the calculation. Classmates, in this section, we have learned about the function of boilers and their composition, the main characteristics of boilers, the classification and models of boilers, fuels and their properties, the amount of combustion air, the boiler heat balance, and various types of heat losses, etc. These contents are all related to the operational safety of power plant boilers. Today, regarding the understanding of boiler equipment, that's all for the introduction. Thank you, everyone.